Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I thought I would walk through kind of my adjusted or updated workflow for landscapes based on the new tools that are out today from Luminar Neo in their fall upgrade. I'm gonna use new tools plus some old tried and true favorites and show you kind of how I would edit a landscape taking advantage of the powerful new capabilities this will be a full demonstration walkthrough. Let's go ahead and get going. This photo here has been cropped and straightened, no other adjustments. So I'm gonna start in Develop Raw, which is where I recommend always starting because I always shoot in raw format. Um, I use Sony cameras, but it supports many, many cameras, and raw files just give you more data to work with. They're generally better quality. Okay, so first thing I notice is that the photo needs a little adjustment to the light. That's why I always start here because there's so many great tools. And what I used to always do would just start with contrast and start playing with that. I don't really start there anymore. I'm now starting more so with pulling the highlights down a little bit. I view the histogram to kind of see what's going on. And as you can see, both obviously in the photo, but also in the histogram, there's a lot of stuff in the shadows that needs to be adjusted. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift the shadows. And I end up going about a plus 32 or 33 here. And I pull the highlights down about, uh, about negative, about the same. So something about like that. And then I come in and make an adjustment to the contrast overall, which is like a 14 or 15. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff. Really no magic here, just straightforward editing. Before, after, a little bit better visibility, especially in the foreground that was a little bit darker. I'm not gonna touch temperature or tint. I'm gonna add a little sharpening and then I think we can be done with that. Now my second tool, and this is really my, always my one-two punch, which is develop raw and then super contrast. And in this case, I go to about 25 on all three of these and I end up not really adjusting the balance. Uh, so I'm just gonna move those to about 25 each. And if you look at the before and the after, you can see it's flattened out the light a little bit. That's okay. Um, I'm gonna still play with other things that are gonna adjust the contrast. And in fact, I think I pulled shadows contrast down slightly but bottom line is one, two punch for me is develop raw, super contrast. And now I feel like I've kind of got my base canvas ready to edit. Now, speaking of editing, my approach, and I've talked about this many times here, has, uh, has and continues to be focused on light and detail and color pretty much in that order. But I also frequently and try to point out that that's a fairly fluid um, order, meaning that I, I approach it that way, light, detail, color, but many times I'll do something in detail or color and then I'll go back and adjust light. Or I'll do detail and color and then I'll adjust light, then I'll adjust color again. So those are my guidelines, but I, I do get a little bit fluid in between them, bouncing back and forth, depending on what the photo needs. And that is because as you adjust contrast, which is light, it also impacts color. So sometimes you gotta go back and fix things or just adjust things uh, to your taste, right? So having done that, the other approach that I take, which dovetails nicely into this, and the kind of the overall approach is global edits, and then local edits, and then color grading, sometimes some more local edits, and sometimes some global. So it's always global, which is the develop raw and super contrast. And then I tend to go into local edits, and then I'll go into color grading, and then, like I said, sometimes it'll be maybe more local edits and sometimes some global edits. That's kind of the general flow. So since light was first, detail is next. And in this case, I'm going to go into mask. and I'm going to use object select AI, which I love because it's really powerful and quick. As you can see, I'm quickly hovering and isolating both the sky and the water. And what I'm going to do is go into adjustments and just drop this like negative 35. All I'm doing is just smoothing it out simply because I like smooth skies and water. Totally uh, season to taste, and this is just something I like to do. doesn't mean it's the thing to do. It's just common for me to want to do it. You've, uh, if you've been here before, you've seen me do it before. So that's a quick uh, light one-two punch with Develop Raw and Super Contrast, because Super Contrast is adjusting the light. And then separately, that was Detail. That was Structure AI. That was negative detail, but still detail or smoothing in this case. And now I want to jump into some color edits. And this is where I'm going to use one of the new tools, which is Color Transfer. It's super fun, and I've been having a lot of um, fun experimenting with it. And I'm going to go ahead and use this photo here, which is a farm photo shot here in Texas that I turned into the crazy colorful sunset and that sort of thing. And as you can see, it brings all the colors over and does a great job. It's just that it's too much. Um, and it defaults to 60, which is, you know, too much. And so what I end up doing is experimenting here, and I end up bringing this down to about 35. And then after getting that where I wanted it, I drop the color intensity to about 50, 
and I dropped the luminosity intensity to about 30. No, excuse me, about 40 here. So I end up not doing anything with transition or color smoothing. And if you'd like to see a video about this tool specifically, color transfer, it's right there in case you missed that one. But if you look at the before and after, there's before and there's after. It's a nice little color look. It was already a sunset and I took a sunset reference photo to just amp up that color look. But I'm not done with color, but I wanted to use this tool because it's a great one for quickly adding a specific color look to a photo. And it brought over the colors you saw it. At 60, it was way too much. But at 35, I think it looks nice. It's a nice little enhancement to the color that I have there. And now that I've done that, this is where I said earlier it's a little bit fluid because what I see is that the foreground's a little bit too dark for me. And so when I see something that's a little bit dark, to me, this means two things. I need to mask it. Uh, and secondly, it means develop. It's essentially dodge and burn, but I use develop for that because it's got a lot more capability. In this case, I'm going to go into masking and linear gradient, and I'm going to start right about here towards the top of the water and just blend it into that shadow at the very top of the water. So I want kind of that subtle fade as I go towards the shoreline there in the distance. And what I want to do is just lift the exposure about a 0.2. So maybe about like that. But if you look at the before, and the after, just brighten that up a little bit, trying to get it to match the sky a little bit more. Now, because it's water, I think of water uh, being darker overall than the sky, because the sky has the source of light in it, of course, and the water does not. But because it's a reflection, I want it to be pretty close, even though it's not going to be exact. So I wanted to raise it a little bit, and that's where using Develop with a mask can help you do that really easily. Now, speaking of masks, there's a lot of great masking tools in Luminar. They continue to get better and better all the time with each update. Luminosity masking came out in the last big update, and I use it every photo. I love it, and I'm going to use it in this one in a minute, but there's a new one called color masking, and I'm going to use that first. And color masking, I'm going to go into color. Now, to be clear, color masking is about creating a mask based on a certain color. I happen to be in the color tool, but color tool and color masking are separate things. You can just do color masking within the color tool. I hope that isn't too confusing. Uh, but what I want to do is isolate a specific color. So I'm going to click on color. It's going to analyze my photo and kind of figure out what all the different colors are. And then I can go in and select the color that I want to create a mask for. And that color is going to be this one right here, which is kind of this orangey kind of peach color that's up in the clouds. I'm going to go ahead and click that to select it and create the mask for that specific color. Okay, so it found that color and I went ahead and dragged the range to 70 so that I could get more colors close to that to basically expand the reach of the mask because what I want to do is create a little bit more saturation and vibrance in that color in the sky. So in this case, I go to 20 on both saturation and vibrance. So I used a color mask to isolate that color in the sky and then add some saturation and vibrance to it. So before and after, it's a little bit brighter, a little bit richer, and that's because I increased saturation and vibrance. It's not massive though, so it may be a little bit hard to tell in the video. But I've completed that, and what I want to do now is also use that tool again, but this time on a specific part of the sky. And in this case, I'm going to essentially dodge and burn with the color masking tool. So develop and masking and color. And this time, what I'm going to do is go up here in the sky and grab some of this blue so that I can adjust the contrast in the sky by isolating a specific color range of the blue that's in the sky. So I've got this section right here where it's a little bit darker and it's towards the top of the photo. I'm going to go ahead and click that to select that and it'll identify that area and build the mask for me. Okay, and much like with the last tool where I adjusted the mask to 70 to increase the range, I did the same thing here. But one thing that's a little bit different is I've got all the stuff in the sky that I want. I don't really want it in the water so you can stack these masks. So I'm going to back up and go into brush and go to erase. And then I'm going to right bracket key to increase the size of my mouse. And I'm going to come in here and just paint over this so that I can erase the mask from that part of the foreground because I don't want to adjust that. And all I want to do is just drop the exposure here by about a 0.2 or 0.2 and change. All I'm doing is slightly darkening. It's almost like adding a little bit of a polarizer at the top of the sky. So there it is before and there it is now. Just adding a little bit more contrast up there. It kind of helps frame the photo. And I think it also helps that part of the sky match a little bit better how dark it is down here, kind of below the reflection of the clouds here in the, uh, in the immediate foreground. Now, one thing I like to do, and I've done this in multiple videos, is use Accent AI, but I like to do that with a luminosity mask. And that's because it targets light values. And one of the things I like to do with Accent AI is target the midtones with a nice, generous fade 
into both the shadows and the highlight areas. So I just drag usually from both ends till I get mostly the uh, midtones isolated. So something about like that. Then you grab these triangles and you start fading it that way is toward the highlights and this way is toward the shadows. And you can kind of see what happens. You're covering a fair amount of the photo, but not the entire photo. And you're ignoring, for lack of a better term, the extreme edges, the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows. So it's hitting the midtones essentially, but it's fading and blending together well because I've separated these uh, little triangles from the main body of that adjustment bar. And what I want to do is I go to about a 20, 22, 23, something like that. So if you look at the before and after, before and after, just a nice little punch, nice little pop on the photo, and that's using Accent AI with the Luminosity Mask. And by the way, if you are interested in my free 27-page Luminar Neo editing guide, it's available on my website. There's a link down below. Again, all you do, you sign up for my, for my newsletter. I'll send you a free copy of it, plus some Luminar presets, other goodies. So just check it out if you're interested. But that 27 pages is packed with information, tips, tricks, ideas, insights, how to use masking, lots of things. So if you want to check that out, feel free to. It's free. Um, and if you don't like it, you can't complain about the price, right? Uh, anyway, so Accent AI is done. And now I want to go to Landscape. I'm going to do Golden Hour at about 15. In this case, I'm going to go across the entire photo just to give a little bit of punch. And then I'm going to wrap this up with a mystical. And what I want to do here is use luminosity masking again. But in this case, what I want to do is control, uh, essentially ignore the highlights. And that's because mystical creates contrast. And so the dark stuff gets darker, the bright stuff gets brighter. Well, I think the bright stuff is bright enough. I don't really want to apply any brightening to those bright areas. And that's perfect use case for a luminosity mask. So I can just come in and tell Luminar, hey, keep this... Uh, this adjustment out of those bright parts and you can fade it like that but you will see and i'm going to maybe adjust this a little bit more that way because one of the things i'm looking for is i want this to be a little bit brighter along this edge and i'll show you why in just a minute uh, and i've got a nice generous fade which is this you can see how no fade there and now as i do this it starts to fade which blends it better into the photo well now i'm going to drop uh over here and do about a 30 on the amount and if you look at the before and the after, it just softens it up a little bit. But the reason I didn't want it here is because it's a little bit brighter along the horizon because it's reflecting what's on the actual horizon. And I didn't want that to get messed up. And so I wanted to keep it out of that area. So the before and the after. And again, if you go back and look at the mask itself, you can just go to mask actions and show. And you can see the mask is, is really light. I mean, it is hitting that area. I could erase it if I wanted to, but I like that very gentle fade into that area. So it's barely touching that area, which means that it's not really impacting the brightness there because I want to keep it bright because it more mimics uh, what's actually happening on the real horizon. So that's a, a tip with Mystical is just to watch those zones and to use it with Luminosity Mask because it does impact contrast pretty considerably. And if you already had contrast that you liked, which I did right before and after, I don't want to blow it too much by applying too much mystical. So that's an entire uh, kind of start to finish workflow on this particular photo before and after. And if you look at the sliding window, you can see, I mean, we massage the light, we adjust the detail, we definitely enhance the color quite a bit across this entire photo. And that was using a lot of the new tools plus existing favorites like Luminosity Mask, Accent AI, multiple uses of Develop and things like that. Not to mention Mystical, which I just love. Uh, but using those things in combination with color masking to impact the color in the clouds and also the, uh, the darkness of that sky to kind of create that polarizer effect. And of course, color transfer, which got me started on the color journey in the first place. You can have a huge impact on your photo before and after. That's how it went in this one, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how to use these new tools and some existing tools in Luminar Neo to craft your landscapes the way you want them to look. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.